Hi, I'm Ernie Zor for Pure to Spring Software, and you're watching another short demonstration video for our new GIS U.S. gift tax application. In this video, I'll be preparing a gift tax return for a widow making gifts to her two children and one grandchild. Now, the first thing you'll notice is th that the screen is divided into two sections. The left side is the tree view, and the right side is the form or document window. Although the contents of the document window change from one form to the next, the contents of the tree view don't change. You can always see it, and it's always there as a checklist of the steps for completing a gift tax return. The first step is entering some basic information on page one, which I'm doing right now. I'm only going to complete part one, and I'm only going to complete the first few fields, so you don't have to watch me type the entire section. Not that it would take that long, but instead, right now, I'm going to open a file that I prepared with part one already complete. There we go. Now, I only wanted to complete up to line 11 because the rest of the questions in part one deal with spouses, and in this example, there isn't one. So I'm going to scroll down the page, and you'll see that there are tan colored fields that you can't tab to or click on. They're read only, and the application, I just wanted to show you them because the application will complete those amber colored fields automatically. Now, in a gift tax return, most of the additional work will, is going to be done on Schedule A, which I will get to in a second. For right now, I'm just satisfied with completing part one. Now, I'm sure most users know that they should save their work, and the rule that I learned and repeat every chance I get is early and often. So now that we have a bit of identification information in the file, we're reminded in step two to save the file. Now, normally I would just click on step two in the tree view, give my file a name, and save it. But this file that I just opened, it already has a name, and it's already been saved. So I'm just going to move on to Schedule A. Now, to go to the schedules, I could click on page two in the tree view or use the paging button at the top of the application, either one. I've mentioned this in order I, I've oh I've mentioned this in other demonstration videos and it's the same in this one I can enter information on any form in any order I don't have to go by the steps in the tree view however it's usually best to follow the suggested order of data entry and that's what I'm going to do here I'm going to click right now on the paging button so that we can take a look at page 2 and that's Schedule A. Now, this is really the meat and potatoes of the gift tax return in the sense that on one or more of Schedule A's three parts, you're going to enter your gifts. Now, I'm going to start with Part 1, and I'll enter the gift to the sun. It'll just take a second here. Okay. Now, in order, again, to keep this demonstration video as short as possible, I'm going to open a file that has the gifts to the two children already entered. And going back to Schedule A, you'll see that there isn't much room for entering all the information the IRS requires, and we have another um, donee yet to enter. Therefore, I'll need a continuation page for the second gift. In the tree view, I'll click on the continuation page for Schedule A Part 1 so you can have a look. And there's where you would enter the second uh, gift, which is already entered. I also want to click on page 3 so you can see how the rest of the return is fleshing itself out. You can see that the total is already there in part four, line one, and the exclusion for the two donees has been applied on line two. Now, the grandchild qualifies as a skip person, so her gift will go on schedule A, part two. And again, to save time, I've prepared a file with the granddaughter's gift entered. So let's open that file up and then go to page two and we'll scroll down a little bit so we can see part two yeah there it is okay that's the that's the third gift to the grandchild and and now let's go to page three 
we were just there and we're going there again and you may notice that all the lines one and two and, and all the other lines as well have been updated to account for that additional gift that I entered now we're gonna skip schedule B which deals with gifts from prior periods and schedule C which covers the DSUE and restored exclusion and instead I'm gonna move on to page four and I'm gonna scroll down to schedule D part one there it is at the bottom and notice that schedule D part one has completed itself carrying the total from schedule A part two which was the thirty thousand dollar gift to the grandchild if a portion of the transfer was non-taxable I would enter that amount in column C not gonna do that and instead I want to go and take a look at schedule D part three which is on page five so I'm gonna go in the tree view click on that and there it is there's there's nothing much to enter except the GST exemption allocated if any in column C so essentially I'm done now going back to page one I'm gonna go back to page one and I'm gonna scroll down to the tax computation section there we go and um, you'll you, you'll see that the the return is complete and um, I just wanted to show you that because by way of an overview I'm gonna preview the return by clicking the print button and when I do that right now you're gonna see a dialogue where it gives you all the um, all the available forms you can check them and not check them and, and and it checks the ones that you've used automatically but of course you can unselect or select any that you wish I'm gonna leave the selections as is and I'm gonna click on the preview print button and wow that was quick now you're looking at at the return in Word and I'm in Word I'm gonna go to the view menus full screen view so you can see more at a time and 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 I'm gonna page slowly through the entire return it's not that long so you can see how nice it looks there's the continuation page there whoops I, I, I was a little too quick on the draw there it is on the left a continuation page is inserted and um, and there's the rest I'll page through the rest of the return I think that may be it okay that's it. I want to thank you for watching this demonstration video, and if you're interested in seeing more of our demonstration, FAQ, or tutorial videos, don't forget that you can follow us on Facebook, or you can subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Otherwise, have a great day.